going to take a deep dive on this one so put on your seat belts to the uh, novice and uh, I guess the beginner uh, seekers uh, this might be a little bit too deep for you I'm not one to decide for you but uh, you know I don't blame you if you uh, exit this video quickly after I start talking about t the topic <clears throat> today I want to do a deep dive uh, into security like real security the reason is is because uh, in Buddhism uh, particularly uh, in uh, a lot of let's say temples there's a lot a lot of fortune seeking right which there's nothing wrong with that right because one thing's for sure we're all at different levels of maturity when it comes to uh i guess spiritual life if you want to call it that or just awareness or awakening because uh you know not all of us are arahants right so some of us uh, are, you know beginner seekers for example or there are aria out there people who are who have realized stages uh, right stages of the path etc so we're all at different stages i guess different maturity so there's nothing wrong with fortune hunting fortune hunting is simply looking for security in the world <clears throat> security in the material that's what i want to talk about now <clears throat> another thing that uh, people always ask frequently uh, particularly in the city monasteries is to, uh, for monks to do chanting for them for protection okay so there's protection and there's security. <clears throat> now there's two kinds. There's two kinds, right? As far as I'm concerned, there's worldly security, worldly protection, and there's the security and protection that comes from realization, right? Like for example, the arahant. And the Buddha talks about the arahant as being the bull of man, the the highest pinnacle, right? So there's two. There's the Loka Dhamma, the worldly Dhammas, and the Lokutara Dhammas, right? The beyond worldly Dhammas. So it just depends which one you want to follow. In terms of protections, sure, it's good to listen to chanting and uh, stick to your morality because morality helps protect you, right, from evil doing. And then in the future, have less. Uh, I guess, uh, negative consequences, right? Negative retribution. So that's definitely uh, essential and definitely important as well. Uh, the biggest protection, right, in terms of the world is, well, at least, let's look at the question first. <clears throat> let's look at the question first. Protection from in the world or security in the world. Now let's look at... <clears throat> the other side of this let's question that question how can there be security in dukkha how can there be protection in dukkha right how can there be protection in the unsatisfactory how can there be protection and security in the unsatisfactory right in 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 impermanence right when the world has a certain flow that goes towards craving and ignorance all the time. So how can there be protection from ignorance if you're ignorant? How can an ignorant protect himself from ignorance? <laughs> this, is a, this is a bit of a twister and um, a little bit of a uh, conundrum because we seek protection and security all the time. I mean, every, I think everybody does. Is it? Nearly every, even a homeless person seeks protection, seeks a tent or somewhere to stay or seeks some food or clothing or shelter. Um, yeah, most people work and, and uh, have a house and they fight, <clears throat> fight every day in order to keep the roof over their heads because that's protection from the elements at least. People lock their doors, they lock their windows because they want to feel secure. They put their money in banks or investments and things like this or they put their money in secret spots right for security reasons <clears throat> for protection reasons everybody does it everybody does it whatever level um, you know from 
from from a person on a very low income to a person that uh, has an extremely high income all right so protection and security is a big big thing and a lot of hours of the day are spent on this a lot of attention is spent on this a lot of focus is spent on this a lot of uh, let's say your the men, the mind goes out and focuses on this factor quite a lot so it's 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 a substantial point it's a substantial thing that needs to be recognized realized understood and analyzed right because what we're trying to do is unlock ourselves from from ignorance and we're trying to go in the direction of wisdom at least if you're a seeker um, at least if you're someone who's trying to uh, seek uh, wisdom and seek liberation and seek unbinding right particularly in the buddhist teaching well this is one of your focuses at least should be one of your base focuses at least or fundamental focuses at least so where you're pointing your energy your mental energy every day is very important because is that are you pointing the mental energy towards the truth towards the dharma or are you pointing the your mental energy towards more ignorance and more problems more suffering more more unsatisfactory results this is very important so there's like i said there's two types of security there's worldly security and there's security that comes from realization of the two i would say security that comes from realization is far superior right is far superior uh the buddha talks about this in a discourse and he did a uh like a, a comparison between you know a, a world turning king to someone who's just entered the stream and the what the person who's entered the stream and has had that realization is uh, like 32 times more 32 times more better off something like that uh, than a world turning king so that gives you you know you can read that sutta somewhere i'm not sure which nikaya which discord which group of discourses it's in but it's certainly there so anyway, the security that we seek, well, if you're seeking security in the world, if you're seeking material security, just remember, like many people, it can be taken away at an instant. I mean, I had a very vivid example um, of this uh, before I became a monk. Um, I used to live in New York at that time, for a time, and um, in 2008, there was a stock market crash. Now, I've talked about this um a few times I think um, not sure where but the thing is in that year I saw a prosperous neighborhood right? a lot of shops a lot of stores a lot of businesses um, a lot of my clients um, flourishing and then all of a sudden in like uh, towards the end of the year the whole neighborhood changed just in an instant in a month or two so many businesses shut down. So many people lost their jobs. So many people lost their houses, their investments, everything. My business went to from a thriving business to virtually just existing, just surviving for a few months uh, until I could fully recover. And at this point, I'd been working something like 15 years or 16 years straight, um, like constantly and incessantly trying to build up my business and finally that year I was having a good a good year and then the stock market crash came and or whatever it was a financial collapse there in New York and all of a sudden all that work all that effort just disappeared it was like it was all taken away from me in like a month or two I went from a thriving business to virtually just surviving almost almost out of business and not just me, like millions of people, literally millions of people. If uh, I'm sure anyone watching this that was in New York at the time could agree with me. I mean, I saw uh, businesses on just on my neighborhood, on, on my block, as they say in New York, because on your when you live on your certain blocks, you, there's the go-to places. It's like a New York thing. But <clears throat> so many of my favorite stores had to shut down because they just couldn't... Uh, keep up with the expenses and the, the client <clears throat> the clients and everything else just dropped so this is a real life experience and this teaches me like how more real impermanence is and how seeking security and material things can only it can only be to a certain level because if you're not 
uh, looking at it in the right perspective and seeing it as it is, is that like the flow is of the come and go of things that are impermanent. One day you could be rich, one day you could be poor. If you don't take that into consideration, you might uh, break your moral correctness to keep your security, to keep your pr protection, which a lot of people do do. So in other words, you might cheat, you might steal, you might lie, you might cut the corners, and you might start breaking into uh, moral dysfunction or moral uh, bad moral behavior or bad moral actions. Now this sets a, off a, uh, a domino effect of disaster for yourself, right, in the future, because bad bad actions have bad consequences, right, and untold consequences. I have this conversation with so many people over the years, and I reflect on this. It's kind of like a, it's like if one person was to have uh, put a gun straight and, and aim it straight up, uh, say in the middle of a crowded place and shoot the bullet, right? Wherever that bullet lands, many things could happen. Nothing could happen, right? It could land on a place and it could land on a car, it could land on a person when the bullet falls down. Many things can happen. Someone can die from it. Someone can get injured from it. Well, nothing could happen. So an action is, is, is no different. So once an action is being shot out, like, a, like even from speech, a verbal action, a mental action, physical action, once it's being shot out, the consequences uh, are, are a myriad. And this is why it's very important to have awareness and to be and to try to be morally correct at all times because what we're trying to do is cut down cut down the unsatisfactory and cut down bad consequences right so when when material things when when the bills start to add up start to pile up or when things like uh, the the bills the, the expenses and the income coming in aren't equaling each other that's when it's very easy to fall off the moral the moral road, the moral track, and it's very easy to start, uh, I guess, participating in actions that are not moral, right, and that are not wise, right, that are not embedded with uh, sati, with awareness, uh, with the right action, right, with the right speech, with the right efforts, okay. So this is very important. So whatever you do when it comes to security and protection, even if you try to get security and protection in the world, eventually you still have to come back to the Noble Eightfold Path in order to flourish and to prosper because that is what keeps you folks, that's what brings you to that prosperity. You see, right morality, right actions, right? We'll just stop there, or maybe one more, right efforts, right? So right morality, right actions, and right uh, efforts, right? Those three things, those three virtues, if you uphold them, right, they're likely to give you much more security and protection from negative consequences or from disasters out there than the opposite. So let's look at this so it, may, it, it, it becomes crystal clear and so and obvious. So if you were to engage in incorrect moral action, incorrect action in general, right and incorrect efforts right if you if you weren't diligent and i did a whole video on diligence previously right that would definitely lead to uh your i guess uh, not good welfare for yourself not a good not a good future for yourself not a good state not a good situation for yourself right so it's important to understand this like you know when we're trying to seek when we're putting our time and energy trying to seek security and protection in the world, what, do you, what are we exactly trying to secure? What are we trying to protect? Of course, we're trying to protect our life. We're trying to protect our loved ones. We're trying to protect our societies. We're trying to protect a lot of things. But are you protecting them if you, <clears throat> if you steer out of the right way of doing things in terms of the, the Noble Eightfold Path? Now, that's a big question. Now, as a Buddhist, you need to... You know, focus on this frequently, right? Because protection and security comes from doing everything correctly. And even then, and even then, disaster can hit anyway because there's the past. Now, this is a thing that I want to cover quite deep. There's the past. Because 
many people, many people, and I say many, when they come to see monks and they seek counsel from monks, uh, you hear this uh, quite frequently, right? That uh, I've been, I've been practicing. I've been trying to practice. I've been following the moral right way. I've been doing everything. I've been putting in the right effort, and nothing seems to be going my way, right? In fact, sometimes things seem to be a lot worse when you start to straighten out. Well, of course, like my uncle used to say, uh, the person who stops smoking forgets how many cigarettes he used to smoke, <laughs> forgets how many cigarettes he smoked before, or she smoked before, or they smoked before, uh, when they're quitting, and that's why they're feeling miserable for a while, right? It's no different from um, someone uh, detoxifying uh, from drugs, right? The first uh, three or four weeks are horrible, right? Or six weeks or three months or six months. Um, I remember from my days um, of having experiences in drug and alcohol rehab centers that <clears throat> sometimes it takes a person a year or two to t fully get over um, the physical side, the physical <clears throat> withdrawals, the physical addiction, but the mental addiction never really goes. As they say in the rehab world, once addicted, always addicted. Once addicted, always addicted. So then it becomes a fight of keeping your, uh, a, mental, a mental battle or a mental focus where you're constantly focusing on trying not to go back into that way of life so you're trying to build you're trying to construct your way out of that right so that's the way to build that's the way to um, get out of sticky situations or addictions or things like this is learning how to construct your way out of it because once you've had that addiction or if you have an addictive personality you get addicted to other things so one of the ways um, for uh, being addiction i've had problems with this uh, myself in in other ways and i don't want to discuss personal life but I know this for sure the, the if you have an addictive personality right the, the idea is to get addicted to positive things or to wholesome things as a beginning and then const and work your way and construct your way out of that situation now coming back to uh, what I was talking about to, in terms of the 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 security security and protection right so like for example if if we're not uh, if we're not focusing if we're not paying attention to our actions daily they lead to our lack of security later right and then there's where the opposite happens you know where we become we become ruthless we become ruthless in pursuits right so we're happy to step on people and enslave people and treat people not well and this kind of behavior as well, there's a lot of this going on everywhere, right? Enslaving people, that's happening everywhere, right? And has been, has been for a long time. The Buddha was talking about this 2,565 years ago about slavery and slaves and things like this, right? Um, and, you know, it's still going on in the world today, right? So, unfortunately, it's... It's, it's dukkha, right? We, we talk about the, con the human condition of dukkha, the human condition of ignorance, clinging and craving for what's not real, right? So the other day, um, here in this temple that I'm staying at at the moment, there's a, there's a uh, crematorium, right? So we're asked to uh, do some chanting and uh, sometimes... Here in Thailand, they're not so sensitive like uh, like in Australia or in America or Europe. Uh, they're, they're, they're less sensitive here when it comes to um, the remains and things like this. So in this particular place, without disclosing too much, um, you see the ashes, right, after the, after the cremation. And what's really clear when you, when you do a reflection on the ashes frequently, you, you, you start to understand that your body turns to that, right? Even if you don't burn the body and you bury the body, it, it turns back into soil at some point, right? Everything erodes to a certain extent, right? 
even though sometimes skeletons don't fully erode, but everything else does. Everything else goes back to the elements from whence they came, right? This gives us a, um, a very crystal clear picture of why I'm talking about these two subjects today, security and protection, because that's where the, the idea of this video came from. It's kind of like, if that's the end result, right? If, I mean, that's the future, right? From being born, death is the, the result. Then where is security and prosperity, security and protection? So prosperity was the previous video. Security and protection, where do they come from? So if the five aggregates, if, if the body just goes back to the elements, where does the mind go? Where is the mind's destination after death? So that's the question at all times the seeker must ask is, if I was to die in the next few minutes, where would, where would the mind's destination be? You see, if you don't know the answer to that, okay, then you're not really paying attention to protecting yourself and finding security for yourself because isn't that the most ultimate security there is? Because what's the worst that can happen? We can die. So where's the mind go after that? Where's the mind's destination? So if you're cr frantically um, toiling every day just to secure material security, possession, um, and, and uh, I guess uh, protection, and you're forgetting about the fact that this life is in permanence and death is on the horizon at all times, right? Then you're not really securing or protecting yourself very well, as far as I'm concerned, in terms of the Buddhist uh, way of looking at things. So this is what I want you to consider today.